In this demonstration, we're going to walk through extending our data loss prevention capabilities to data at rest as well as third-party CASB integration. So the way we do this is we come to administration, SaaS application tenants, um, to integrate with third-party SaaS applications to scan content that exists there. So I'll start with adding an application. I'll add, uh, in this example, I'll add box.com, but there are multiple third-party applications Zscaler supports. So we'll go to box.com and my tenant name uh, is called Data Parity. Um, and you'll see Zscaler generates a SAS connector ID. So I can copy this and I'll go, uh, I need to click uh, go to box settings, uh, which I already had opened. Um, and I'll come into my apps screen and custom apps manager. I'll then click add app and I enter the client ID and click next. And then I click authorize. And then I can see that the, <clears throat> and then I can see that the um, Zscaler um, SaaS connector cloud app has been created. It's authorized and enabled. What I need to do next is come to account and billing as part of the exchange of information. And I copy my enterprise ID and I come across here back to Zscaler and I paste in the enterprise ID. And I've now created a federation between Zscaler and box.com. So it'll validate um, the information, making sure that it's uh, updated. Let's uh, refresh this page. And we can see now that it is active um, and we have this federation. So now we can go ahead and start creating some policy. Um, so in this tenant, I already have um, my default DLP dictionaries, uh, the predefined dictionaries that include identity card information, national insurance number, social security numbers, credit card numbers that are grouped together into DLP engines. So a, a PCI dictionary that identifies credit cards and social security numbers, which we can then trigger on. So what I want to do is come across to uh, policy and I'll come across to my SAS security API control. And so I have a number of different um, scanning capabilities here. I'm going to specifically focus on data loss prevention and add my DLP rules, but I can equally apply malware detection for those files as well. I have the ability to exclude content from, from the policy. So the policy will scan for everything and I can put some exceptions in. Um, scanning exceptions that occur across the board, um, as well as how to generate alerts. What I'll do under policy, I'll add a DLP rule, uh, rule number one, number of admin ranks as we uh, would normally configure. This rule is enabled and I'll select my box.com um, data parity instance there. But I could equally apply this if I had multiple instances to simplify and group uh, applications together. And so again, I have a number of filters that I can um, filter on, um, files by specific owners, groups, departments, um, and then I will scan against all of my DLP engines, um, but let's uh, specifically focus on um, the PCI engine. I scan any file type, um, and I can filter again on different um, collaboration types, if it's available externally, internally, what links are available, if it's marked as private or not. So I'll say, um, any collaboration type that's uh, applied to the files. Um, if I had a DLP incident receiver, so the incident receiver being the virtual machine that receives um, files that have matched against DLP policy, I could uh, send the files here. Um, and what do I want to do as an action? So I can um, mark files as read only uh, for all or internal or external. I can remove all of the links. Um, remove sharing entirely, or I'll just report on the incident. So in this case, I'll just report on the incident, and I'll say these have got high severity. And again, then I can 
make notifications. I can either send it to um, an auditor that I've configured or I can uh, generate emails to external identities. Um, so I'm going to leave this as a pretty simple configuration. We're going to look for uh, files that trigger on the PCI engine in my box.com tenant that I created um, and then we'll just run a report on it afterwards. So we'll click save and we'll click activate and my rule has been created. Um, so now what I need to do is come across to the scan configuration. So the scan configuration defines where the file, when the um, scanning will occur. So I'll create a, a schedule, I'll select that data parity tenant and that policy that I just created and I can make some decisions on where to scan. Um, so I can scan all data, data after a certain time, new data only. Uh, this is the initial scan, so I will scan all data, but I might want to scan more periodically um, for uh, new, new files or whatever. So let's click uh, save on that one. Uh, and I can activate that change as well. So I can go ahead now and click uh, play. Uh, it'll start scanning the content on my box tenant. And if I look at the content uh, within my uh, box.com uh, instance, I've got quite a lot of content from quite a lot of users um, under uh, um, box.com, lots of files. So it will take some time to run through all of this content. Um, however, we can come across to analytics um, and we can look at the SAS security insights. And we can see it started um, to scan content. Let's look at uh, insights. Uh, specifically, let's look at logs uh, for the last uh, two minutes. We know that it started to um, scan for content. Let's look at logs for the first. Let's look at logs for the last five minutes and click apply. log time is out. Let's, uh, let's pause and give it a bit of time um, to scan some content. <clears throat>
Okay, so the scanner's been uh, running for about 10 minutes now. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll come across um, to analytics um, and we'll come to the SAS security report. Um, so the security report tells me which applications have been in use as users have been browsing, but I can come across uh, to assets and we can see the SAS assets report. And this tells me that I've got a box.com tenant that has uh, been scanning. We found about 840 files. If we click on this and drill down, um, files with uh, a DLP violation, we can start to see the files um, that have come across. Um, so we've gone ahead, we've scanned some uh, content. We've seen a file here, um, social security number or SSN CC in all files SSE is a high uh, severity incident that uh, triggered against a DLP rule. And of course we configured to just report on this so we haven't taken any action. So I can click here and I can um, do things like remove the public link. I could go to the file and take a look at this file. It'll link across to box.com um, and I could actually go ahead and inspect that document directly. And as you can see here, it uh, had a bunch of credit card numbers um, and, uh, and other information, social security numbers. So if we come back to our uh, violations here, we can come across and we could uh, remove the public link. So we take it off the internet um, or we can actually have a look at the scan history, which will uh, go through that analytics um, and show us when that file was scanned, which rule it uh, triggered against, um, what the action was, um, and other information about the file, MD5 hashes and things like that. Um, tells us about how long it took to process the file, um, the hashes of the file, which of our data centers actually did the processing, um, and other information about the file, which we can use to track uh, file changes over time, uh, look for duplicate file types. Um, as I said, under uh, our policy for uh, SAS security, we could we have DLP. We could also do the same for malware detection on our uh, box.com tenant um, and scan for files for malware. Again, if we detect malware, third party has updated or uploaded a file for malware onto our box.com tenant, we can tombstone that file and prevent users from downloading it. Or again, also our users uploading files and prevent those from being shared externally and uh, affecting our company uh, reputation. Um, you have exceptions in here, scanning exceptions within uh, these files. So uh, which tenants, which owners of those users and folder information, we can add total exceptions from, from that to prevent um, scanning uh, for sensitive data or data that we know specifically is going to contain this kind of information that we specifically want to uh, share externally. Um, so I hope this is useful.